Praise the Lord. I've come today talking about a subject that uh, <laughs> scientists talk about a lot. And it's about the quantum universe, you know, the quantum physics. And I'm going to put a link to a, a uh, video down below about the quantum universe. So I, I think the person for downloading that video, it, it, it come off the natural geographic, if I'm right, because I watched it the other day and it's just unique. It's here on YouTube, uh, you know, today. So I'm going to make some comments on the quantum physics, the universe, the, the dark matter stuff, and the dark energy. Okay, I'm going to click this. I want you to hear just the beginning of this uh, um, video. In the beginning, there was darkness, and then, bang, giving birth to an endless expanding existence of time, space, and matter. Every day, new discoveries are unlocking the mysterious, the mind-blowing, the deadly secrets of a place we call the universe. The universe. <clears throat> okay. And if you go ahead and watch it, it's talking about how they're trying to figure out the these super little atoms and cells that make up matter in the universe. Now, to really understand quantum physics, to really understand it, not with the human mind, but the spiritual mind, um, in Genesis it makes it very plain. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness. That dark matter you're talking about was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And he said, Let there be light, and there was light. And he saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light and the darkness. So now we see light, matter, and dark matter. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay, now, we see in this creation that he was making, which is out of matter, see, God is matter. I mean, really is. He's, he's, he's a consuming fire. He is invisible. And we can't see him. You know, all the quantum physics people that keeps looking out there and trying to find out the God factor, the God matter, really in a way they're looking at it because you can't see you can't see him because of the darkness. You have to have light. Then we go on and we, say, we see, And God said there would be a firmament in the midst of the water, and it divided the water from the water. So therefore, the universe, the earth, which was water at this time, 
And God made the ferment and divided the waters which were under the ferment from the waters which were above the ferment. And it was so. And there is like a crystal, I mean like a dome. If you go so far out in space and you can look down, there's this halo around the earth. Okay? That protects the earth here from out there. And, and God called the ferment heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And he said, let the water under the heaven here on earth be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and he gathered together all the waters called the sea and God saw that it was good. And then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed and fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so so see to be able to to have oxygen on earth we had to have plant material so before anything the plants had to grow here on earth and so thus God made it so to maintain breath a breathable atmosphere where living organisms could live. I mean, we couldn't live without oxygen. And plant life produces that. That's why Mars is a dead planet because it has no plant life. I'm not saying that Mars doesn't have some kind of life, bacteria, whatever, up there. But it's not made for human life because there's no oxygen. There's no oxygen because there's no trees. And there's no trees because there's no water, or if there is, it's so little that of water that it cannot produce the amount of vegetation that it needs to have the the atmosphere in a state that it can produce life and the earth brought forth grasses and herbs and yielded tree seed after his own kind and the tree yielded fruit and whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw it was good then, and let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them for the signs and seasons for days and years. Okay. I just stepped into a freaky part of quantum physics. And they talk about the freaky part here in that they, they cannot understand. But the freaky part of quantum physics, in the Big Bang Theory, it says all about these, you know, stars and things. Well, no. Let me give you a freaky deal about quantum physics. God brought forth the earth that was dark and without form brought it up hung it in a vast universe of darkness so dark matter that held everything and held this earth in place out here Then he divided it with his halo thing to protect it from the universe out there. 
and then he had vegetation to come up that would cause the life-giving oxygen that would sustain life here on earth. He created that all first. You see what I'm trying to say? Quantum physics, you're looking for God, but you you miss him because of all the darkness you can't see because of the darkness. And he let there be light, okay? What kind of light? There were two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. So he takes the next thing that he makes is the sun out here, and, and the moon, and then the stars, you know, the galaxies that, that gave light into the universe, into that mass of darkness. He put lights out there to light up the darkness in the universe. And also, the sun also gives its life rays down to, to manufacture um, the growth, to stimulate the growth of the plants and the vegetation that produces oxygen that human life can live. And then he created the moon out there that controls the tides and the seasons. These things control seasons and, and tides that revolve around in earth. He had to set it up first where it can maintain life. And then he began to create. He created the fish in the seas, the birds in the air, the animals on the ground. He had to prepare a place to maintain life form. And he had to put it in a structure that is so complex that we cannot imagine. And science with quantum physics has been searching for every and ever, it seems like. I mean, you know, what happened? So they come up with this theory of a Big Bang. Well, I also seen another deal on how they believe that when the Big Bang happened and all of this stuff happened, there was this clump of thing and it kind of like went to the ocean and we started out as this amoeba and fish and then another fish and then a thing that walked upon the earth that like was like a fish in a way but it you know it uh, evoluted on down that finally it become like a ape monkey gorilla whatever you want to call it and then in the state of evolution we somehow come out of that mess. It, 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 when in quantum physics, you make it so extraordinary difficult for my mind to even imagine how life would have been begin in their theories and see these are all theories because they haven't been able to really 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 find the answers it's theory Darwin's theory is a theory it's something that he thought about he meditated and, and he become to a conclusion that this is what happened. But I'm telling you what the Bible tells you and what really happened that boggle 
it's the mind of quantum physics professors and scientists. Because when I looked at this movie, I began to ponder in my own mind the workings that are involved in what they're saying and the workings what God did. Now in Job, we see that Job was a righteous man and he was tested and and things, but right at the end in chapter 38, God speaks to, to uh, Job and he says, Job 38, starting with uh, verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth and declared, If thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations there are fastened? Who led, laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut up the sea with doors where it break forth as it had issued out of the wound? When I made the cloud the garment thereof and the thick darkness a swirling band for it the thick darkness that dark matter that he made and broke up for it my decree place and set bars and doors that's the reason why the tide only comes so forth and it goes back out there are doors that he has set up, standards that he's set up, bars that he has put in place to hold all of this in place. Everything is held in place by a design throughout the whole universe. And that dark matter out there is what is the consistency that holds all of these things in place. It is that dark energy out there that he made that pulls and brings forth. And really, that was even before everything else began. The dark matter, that dark energy was there before the earth was even hung in space. And said, Here too shalt thou come, but no farther. How shalt thou pound ways be stayed? Hast thou commanded the morning since that day, and caused the day spring to know his place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? And, and that's coming one day. The wicked will be totally shaken out. It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stood as a garment. And from the wicked their light is withheld, and their high arm shall be broken. This is why, unless you look at the true matter that exists and how it come to be, you cannot see because of the darkness. Has I entered into the springs of sea, or has I walked in the search of the deeps? Had the gates of death been open unto thee, or has I seen the doors of the shadow of death? Has I perceived the breath of the earth? Declare if thou knowest it all. Where is the way where the light dwelleth? As for darkness, where is the place thereof, that thou shouldest take it to the border thereof, that thou shouldest know the path to the house thereof. Knowest thou it, 
because thou whence thou born or because the number of thy day, days is great and so he's saying are, are, did you know all this before you was born or when you was born and um, is you are you are you many days old years centuries has I entered into the treasure of the snow see God has treasure houses or has I seen the treasure of hell of the hell you know hell that falls from the sky ice which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war. Some of these are preserved till the end day. By what way is the light pardon, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Who had the divided a water crest for the overflowing of water, or a way for lightning of thunder? To cause it to rain on the earth where no man is. I mean, you know, it rains everywhere. Even where men are not. You don't need to be there. It rains. This is God's way. It's not an illusion. It's not something of a mind that, you know, the quantum physics people try to talk about. If you're not looking... It'll change into something else, but when you look at it, it'll change. No. It rains out there where no man is on the wilderness wherein there is no man to satisfy the desolate and wasted ground. He does this to satisfy the earth and let it drink in the water to cause the bud of the tender herbs to spring forth. Where there is no man, the tender buds will spring forth. Hath the rain a father, or who hath begotten the drops of dew? Out of whose wound came the ice, and the horror frost of heaven? Who hath gathered it? The water are hid, hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet in the hues of P-L-E-I-A-D-E-S? And I went and looked that up, because if I don't really understand something, I'll, I go look it up. And it says, um, the seven daughters of Atlantis, and P-I-E-I-O-N-E, -E, placed by Zeus among the stars. Uh, a cluster of stars, when I, we're not talking about Zeus, Zeus, really, but a cluster of stars in the constellation T-A-U-R-U-S, including six bright stars, a seventh bright star, the last P-I-E-L-A-D has apparently faded from sight since all the original sightings. So he's talking about stars out there in the universe that he set forth. Not Zeus, but he set forth. Or loosen the bands of Orion. And we all know what Orion is. Canst thou break forth the M-A-Z-C-A-R-O-T-H in his season. And that's a sweet cherry. I went and looked up and I said, what, 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 what is that? Why, why is that important? And so I went over here and I looked it up and we're, okay. Uh, it's a sweet cherry. A wild sweet cherry whose young seeds are used in a rootstock for cultivation vegetation. Arcanus thou God, A R C T R U S, with his sons. Well, okay, let's look it up. And it is again talking about the universe. A great orange star in the cluster B O O T E S, the brightest star in the north. Chris uh, crystal sapphire uh, magnitude 0 
a minus 0 0.04. So he's talking about the universe out there that he created. Knowest thou the region of the heavens? Canest thou set the domain thereup in the earth? Can thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that abundance of water may cover thee? Canst thou send lightning that may go and say unto thee, Here we are? Who hath put wisdom inward parts? Or who hath given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds in wisdom? Or who can stay the battles of heaven? The battles of heaven. Wow. There's a lot goes on that you quantum physics people don't understand. Freaky? Weird? Mm-hmm. When the dusk when the dust groweth into hardness and the clods cleave fast together. So we see that he did create all things. And I, I know that the people that are into quantum physics and things will go, well, that woman don't know what she's talking about. She has no idea what she's talking about. Yes, I do. The atoms and the molecules and the things that are so fine or so... Even a microscope can't even get them all because they are so, so little but intense and combined together. Okay, let's go to Psalms. 18 and let's read beginning with verse 7 then the earth shook and trembled and the foundations also the hills moved and they were shaken because he was wrath they went up a smoke out of his nostrils and far out of his mouth devouring coals were kindled by it this is describing God and he bowed he bowed the heavens, the universe, you know, it's bowed. The heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. This dark matter was under his feet when he came down. And he rode upon a cherub, and did fly, yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness, he made darkness, that dark matter out there, that darkness, that dark energy out there. He made darkness his secret place. His secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters, that massive dark mass out there. And thick and thick clouds of the sky. The universe holds his secrets in darkness. And the quantum physics can look and look and look and look until really blue in their face, until you understand who God truly is and who the Creator is, you will never understand the secrets of dark matter and the dark energy that's out there in space. There is no possibility in the wisdom of your own human mind can conceive the secrets of God. No way can you estimate, can you put under a microscope that you can, I mean, even in the film it says that it's probably into a higher dimension more than they can ever understand. And when you, and then they also said that these are, um, different worlds that we're in like okay I'm here but I'm out there somewhere and 
what I decide here will decide out there, that person out there. If I decide to do good, then that person may decide to do evil. No. I'm here. I'm real. He created me, okay? And, and let me say this in closing. Science and all its awesomeness... Science and all the telescopes and all of the stuff that they have out there in the universe, looking to the farthest regions of the universe, you will never fully understand how it all come about, what this dark matter that holds this universe together that holds all things in place, this dark energy holding place, because it is the secrets of God Himself. And to type, yeah. tap into that dark matter, and I'm on the video, honey, and to tap into that dark matter that is out there and around us, we have to understand, honey, we have to understand that that we are made by an all-powerful and all-consuming God. We must understand that. If you don't understand that, then you will never yeah. perceive what quantum physics is about. Because I'm telling you people, it is the mystery of God. Bless you in the name of Yeshua, and I've got company, so Father, in the name of Yeshua, bless this film, and let there be understanding. Amen.